And welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending September 19th, 2020. We're going to talk through some news items here. We're just going to be a little more uh, just sort of laid back and relaxed about this. And we're going to start right off with some Sword Art Online news. Uh, the final episode of Alicization aired recently and ended with a little tease for the fans that the Sword Art Online progressive light novel series will be getting an anime uh, project. Um, and um, actually, that down there says TV anime. It did not say TV anime, it just said anime project. So, you know, could be OVA, could, could be something else. Um, for those unfamiliar, the progressive novel series is a retelling of the original Sword Art Online novels. So it is a kind of a rework of original SAO. Uh, they've been out since 2012. Uh, the first novel launched in 2012. Uh, and they're about the uh, journey of Kirito through Aincrad Castle, uh, floor by floor, all the way through. So this is definitely one of the big news items of the week. Um, is this something that gets you guys interested? Are you familiar with SAO at all? Is an SAO thing for you guys? Well, I, I, I watched the, the first anime that came out. I never read any of the light novels. Mm -hmm. um, actually, light novels are, are something that I'm, I'm kind of not on familiar territory, territory with. It's not something I normally uh, get into. But um, the, the sword light, uh, this is, seems to have such a big like universe to it, or it's starting to, to have a big universe to it. And I'm almost feeling a little lost. So this yeah. feels like a, so something else on top of it. You know, how we were mm. talking about and she, I don't think it's as bad as that. No. But, I, I, you know, I, I, you'd have to work to get that that, that far. Mm. But, uh, it just feels like it's it going in that direction. 10 years. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I saw the little snippet on it that said it's going to be a, a, a recap, right? Yeah, it's basically a retelling of mm -hmm. the original story focusing on the castle. The Iron Crade, the, mm -hmm. the thingy. Um, I, you know what I mean? I welcome that. I, I certainly, uh, Gun Gale 2, where, you know, it's part of the franchise, but it's now, that part is sort of receding away from SAO quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that's going to go. Mm -hmm. um, I get, you know, going back to the, the other talk, I trying to get back to the Alicization, the mm. war in the, in the netherworld or underworld, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get back to that. I'm just not at the right place. I'm in rom-com mode at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm into that lighter subject matter. So sure. I haven't gotten as far into Alicization as, as I would like to be. Yeah. Do you, but, th do you think this will be a, that this will bring in new fans? Do you think folks will say, oh, well, I didn't get into SAO, like we were saying, because of all this stuff. Well, yeah. it's a retelling, so I can just kind of, you know, get in now and have, and, and know the story from a new, a new starting point. I mean, I, that's, it seems like a fairly obvious ploy, because yeah. I think you could probably watch the current SAO, mm. the War in the Underworld, but it's really... You know, I mean, you could watch Gun Gale 2 by itself because okay. none of it makes any any connection mm. really actually to Gun Gale 1. Okay. Um, and it certainly has absolutely no connection to SAO 2 or SAO 1. Mm. So, you know what I mean? Like, having a recap of it will, I'm sure those people have been hearing folks say, oh my gosh, SAO 1 was so good. It was, mm. it was such a great series. Don't listen to the haters. I'm sure that this will, you know, be that way to be like, okay, if I could just get a brief synopsis on this, now I can mm -hmm. jump in knowing the characters and what happened over into this series that's currently running, and I can kind of catch up with everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense to me. Um, cool. Um, speaking of um, getting back into things, we also got an announcement about Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Um there is a, uh, a new anime called Legend of the Galactic Heroes Dainutis, uh, which is a uh, new adaptation of the epic science fiction novels. And they've announced that it's going to be a 24-episode sequel, which will be basically episode 25 to 48, uh, along with a promotional video. Um, and uh, so that is a thing coming. That was a uh, Dainutis Kaiko, the new thesis, Starcross, was a 12-episode series that premiered in April 2018. 
uh, which was available on Crunchyroll and Funimation. Um, and so we are getting a, uh, even more of the new Legend of the Galactic Heroes, which is definitely one of those things that is a big franchise that I could never make much headway into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've, I've made it through, I think, five of the first season mm -hmm. of the new, the new oh, one, okay. not the original. Mm -hmm. uh, like 100 episode, the, whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's good, but it, it, you know, I'm not in a har hurry to get back to it because that one has got so much going on. Yeah. It. It's, you know, the fleet yeah. battles are amazing. Mm. You know, I, I could wish for it, it, it. They've done it well, at least, where you have fleet battles. Space doesn't have spotlights. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you do genuinely have parts where you're you're sitting in the imperial you know command mm -hmm. ship with Lohengrin or whatever the guy the blonde dude mm -hmm. and you're like there's space it's dark there's <laughs> fleets out there and there's shooting mm -hmm. but you can't, it's kind of hard to tell so that they're backing up what you're seeing with like the computer display model where it's like mm -hmm. okay we're going to do this we're going to go through the center of this we're going to drive the you know these two wedges apart we're going to flank with that mm -hmm. it's like so there's a lot of cool stuff going on in that mm -hmm. And the part that's tough is, like, all the politics that then happen. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yes, you know, in any time where you have the free Federation of Planets and you've got the Imperial, you know, group, yeah, there's politics involved. You know, you've got different people negotiating with different parts of different things going. There's all kinds of crap happening at the same time that's mm -hmm. not fighting. Yeah. And that's kind of the part where it's a little dull. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, where it's like, okay, yeah, you, you know, somebody does, somebody's in trouble with something, so they've been replaced, and, oh, wait a minute, somebody's about, somebody's gonna get, get, like, killed. Cool. No. Okay. No, they're not doing that. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, like, just, just blow a battleship up or something. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, the original series, it, it, it original series but the first first series mm. um watched and and you know, enjoyed it because actually i do like those kinds of things like that's why we read dune so many times and have <laughs> so many copies of dune because that's that's what actually what i like house of trees forever mm -hmm. um but house, as, house Harkonnen. Harkonnen. um so as as Brent, as you were describing that they're going to make a sequel and they're going to add these many more seasons or mm -hmm. episodes to it, my my internal face was just kind of glazing over, <laughs> and I was just kind of like, well, I liked it, but it was so sort of hard to get through the first time. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez, there's more. Oh, mm. Mm. And, and to echo and to echo the sentiment, I'll blow something up, please. <laughs> what? Well and that was my issue. Like, I, I, like I watched the first episode of both the original and the new one, um, just kind of see and compare and so forth. And I was like, I'm intrigued. I'm not really sucked in yet, but I can tell if I start watching this and then yeah. stop, I'm going to be completely lost. Absolutely true. This is an anime that you definitely have to, once you start it, you cannot stop it. It's not one of those things like Last Exile where you can just go... Mm -hmm. I have this interest in this thing because I want to get this done now so I can put this aside. No, you have to keep up with this. Mm -hmm. You have to, even though it's, you can go back to the episodes, you still, it's just easier to have it fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, you know, reconnecting like, all the character care. points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. no, uh, mm -hmm. it's been a while since I've seen the first one. And I'm just thinking to myself, just like going, thank God I've read Dune so many times that I could actually recite the entire damn novel <laughs> of this thing. I'm just kind of like going, God, I'm going to have to figure out all the different, why are they connected? Why are they, oh, yeah. it hurts. Yeah. yeah it hurts. A beginning is a time to make the most delicate care that the balances are correct. Um, it's not like Akira, <laughs> which is a very different experience. And speaking of Akira experiences, uh, Funimation announced it is releasing a 4K remaster of the Akira anime film on a limited edition uh, Blu-ray 4K release. It'll come out December 22nd, uh, and it will include a 40-page booklet. Um, this is going to be quite a thing, um, rather nice. And in addition, um, IMAX announced on Friday 
that that 4K remaster will screen in selected theaters in the United States September 24th. So, like, this upcoming week. Um... <laughs> um, also, both AMC Theaters and Regal Cinemas began listing um, September 24th screenings for the 4K remaster. Uh, so that will be a potential thing. Um, uh, to give you an idea, uh, the Dragon Ball Super Broly film was the first anime film to scream in IMAX back in January of 2019. Uh, in the U.S., that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it made a boatload of money, apparently. Like, it was hugely successful. Um, so, yeah, we've got, we're getting, um, Akira in 4K and in theaters. Um, what response do you, who is going to go see Akira in theaters, do you think? Every kid that's heard about it for, like, the last 20 years. <laughs> um, honestly, if I had um, to, the question I had... is, who's going to be near enough to a theater right. to see it? That's it, yeah. And um, it's like, being able to see it is dependent on the day, which the 24th is a Thursday, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Isn't it? Because mm -hmm. tomorrow's yeah, it 20, is. yeah, it's a Thursday. It's, it's Thursday. And you know what I mean? So that's a, kind of why they can't show things on Fridays or Saturdays. I don't know. but mm -hmm. <clears throat> So there's that factor. Um, And how many IMAX theaters are there scattered around? Mm -hmm. And I think we have an IMAX theater in Blacksburg. Mm-hmm. And I'm not in Blacksburg. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like I, you know what I mean. Like mm. I just went on to AMC Theaters website, and sure enough, there's Akira on it, which is an odd experience to begin with. Um, and I'm just kind of scrolling down advanced tickets. If I click on that, um, and I search for my area. Um, it's listing like every AMC theater in my area. So well, I think this is just IMAX. It's general. It, yeah, yeah, it's IMAX. It's AMC and it's Regal. Wow. Yeah. So I, I think this is this might be like the first wide release of an anime film in the U.S. that I can think of. Because Miyazaki films don't get them. Yeah, Maybe. they get special release stuff. Yeah. Cowboy Bebop was very limited. Mm -hmm. Well, would you consider it to, well, given that it's old, I mean, it's yeah. not like a new mm -hmm. anime film general release. It's a re-release. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Um, this is kind of the surprising thing is I, you know, the IMAX thing, I was like, that's awesome. It's amazing. But like you were saying, it's okay, but how many, you know, IMAX theaters are out there? But that's a lot of options. With, the other question is... With this general release, that literally means... Everybody who's never had the chance to see it on the big screen can yeah. finally get to see it on the big screen and exactly. remastered. Not just ye olde copy on the mm -hmm. DVD from 20 years ago or yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, okay, now I, I clicked through to a local uh, a theater and it says, no showtimes have you been announced for this theater. Um, showtimes are usually, uh, for Friday and the Audio, you posted by Wednesday afternoon, which is odd because it should be time by now. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, so it is possible that this got sort of seated on all the theaters, but it's not actually going to be have like show times at all the theaters. Unknown, mm. you know. Um, mm. um, all I know is if I had kids, I'd be like, "Don't worry about school." Well, no, that's I would worry about school. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Don't worry I mean, about sitting on your laptop at home. Mm -hmm. Sit in the yeah. theater. <laughs> ah, there you go. Oh, kids, we're going to see Akira. Hey, Dad, why? Come on, <laughs> it's anime. time for a Get field it. trip. It's an anime field trip. There we go. Great. Japanese yeah. culture and visual yeah. media. Hmm? Education. There what? You what go. Wait a minute. What was the university? <laughs> oh, my gosh. What was the university club, <laughs> culture Getchikin. and visual media? Get you. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Mm. Yeah, it would be your club time. Yeah, yeah. children. This is a visual media. <laughs> uh, anime and visual media. Uh, do you have an idea of the, uh, this release, uh, uh, this release, uh, released on uh, uh, IMAX theaters in Japan back on April 3rd. Uh, it ranked number nine when it opened, and it was on 36 screens. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Akira right there. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> There's love for the old film. Mm -hmm. Exactly.
exactly. <laughs> so, uh, I, and I read somewhere, and is I don't know if you you can confirm mm-hmm. this, Brent or not. But I read somewhere that it's actually going to be um, subbed. It's not going to be. Oh, uh, okay. Up. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be subtitled. Hmm. Which again, we had this discussion about first dub or second dub, and I had seen mm-hmm. the yeah. you know the one that was just like not. Not the good one. <laughs> well, no, wait a minute. I saw the one with the quiet te- I am Tetsu. Okay, yeah, that, that's the better one. one. Wasn't yeah. the terrible one where was screaming? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, the yeah, screaming yeah. one is not the good one. Mm-hmm. I yeah. saw the, the better one. It was still awkward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Next time we get together, I'll have to pull out my copy of the, the old streamlined dub and we'll just go through select moments of, of that movie <laughs> with, with that old dub. Yikes. Um, yeah, it, that's an experience. Uh, but yeah, I, I, apparently so. Um, I don't see any um, information on ANN yet about sub versus dub, so they may have yeah. announced it, just not here on the on the site yet. Um, so that's very you know, it, it if you can watch it in in sub, just hear how you know mm. the voice actors were supposed to sound. That is that has value in and of itself. Yeah, exactly. I'm not I'm not going to get into the sub dub <laughs> controversy. Yeah. Just purely saying, if you love dubs, great, mm. but you know at least one time for that film yeah. it's, it's it's educational to do it sub absolutely yeah totally agree um moving on to actually some crunchyroll news um crunchyroll announced on friday it will be streaming burn the witch uh the theatrical film um uh which and that will be uh streaming on october 8th um, sorry, october 1st at 8 p.m eastern in North America, Central America, South America, Europe, Africa, Oceania, the Middle East, and the Commonwealth of Independent States. Um, they have an English subbed version of the second promo video on their site already. Um, and for those curious, this is the most recent thing by Tite Kubo of Bleach fame. So it has uh, that built-in audience already. Um, and uh, I think this is definitely a bit of a coup for Crunchyroll to get something this, this significant. Um, uh, away from Funimation, frankly, um, you know, and uh, I think it's going to be a little feather in their cap. Uh, still, they look gorgeous. They're, they're still there. I mean, Crunchyroll's their whole new tier system. You know, got a high school being their thing with webtoons. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're trying hard oh, yeah. to make sure that they're they're not going to get eclipsed by Sentai or Funimation or mm-hmm. any of those. So well, kudos to them. Here's the other interesting thing, um, which I, I just noticed. Uh, the film, uh, the anime will have event screenings for two weeks in Japan, opening on October 2nd. So Crunchyroll gets it a day early. Ahead so of the Japanese. Of their, yeah, as I was going to say, instead of their simulcast where it's like, oh, within hours of broadcast in Japan, Japan gets it within hours of broadcast. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> Like, everywhere, basically, in the world, other than Japan, I think. Wow. Well, Oceania, the Middle East, Europe, it doesn't say, like, um, uh, let me just double check here. Um, uh, so I guess not, um, so yeah, not, not China, not India, um, not the, the, the East in general, so to speak, right. but... The, the middle third of the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those, like, two and a half billion um, people, whatever. Just, it's just a small rural population. Mm, yeah. Um, this will be interesting. It's like from. It, I wonder what kind of bleachish kind of things are being brought into this. I hope mm. it's a departure, a departure from bleach story style and art style. The the key piece kind of looks a little different than bleach. So yeah, it looks like they definitely adapted those designs differently for the for the movie. Type. No offense. I mean, just yeah. I'm familiar with the Bleach model, mm-hmm. so yeah. I would like to see something a little different. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, I'm curious. Certainly, everything I've seen of it looks, you know, um, not attached at all to Bleach, uh, you know, story wise, yeah. character wise, and so forth. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm curious. I, I'd love to see what that. The goes. minute they start talking about hollows, I'm turning it off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. We had enough of that. Enough Captain of that. the Soul Reaper Society. No. Nope! <laughs> <laughs> Um, speaking of classic anime, let's go back to some even more classic anime. Uh, Discotech, uh, licensed, like, all of the classic anime, uh, this week. Um, they have licensed The Rose of Versailles, the Hajime no Ippo anime from the year 2000, Legend of the Black Heaven, which no one else has ever heard of, 
Um, Battle Athletes OVA and Battle Athletes Victory, which I have certainly heard of because I've talked about here on this channel. Uh, Lupin the Third Tokyo Crisis. Lupin the Third Woman Called Fujiko Mine, which is a Fujiko Mine focused spinoff of Lupin. Uh, Gino Cyber, Project Eiko. Ninja Senshi Tobikage, aka Ninja Robots. Uh, Case Closed, The Crimson Love Letter, one of the 8 billion uh, Detective Conan movies. Um, Submarine Super 99, Simple Gear G, Devil Man Lady, and Konosuba, God's Blessing on This Wonderful World 2. Uh, so, uh, exactly. Um, and we, we do know that, um, so a, a few details on this. Um, Rose of Versailles will be the HD remaster of the series, which is cool. Um, that'll ship early 2021. Hajime no Ippo will be 2021. It will include the, um, all the TV, uh, episodes in English and Spanish dubs, except for episode 76, which I don't know why, um, plus the Champion Road special, and the Mashiba vs. Kimura OVA, uh, subs only, which is its first release ever in North America. Um, Legends of Black Heaven will be its first release on Blu-ray disc ever in the world. That is how obscure that, that anime is. Nobody ever cared. Um, it'll be a, a, an upscale, including the original Pioneer dub. Um, it is... <laughs> no, Legends of Black Heaven was a big deal when it came out. It was not a big deal when it came out, but it was, it was... People talked about Legends of Black Heaven when it came out, and it just fell off a cliff, unfortunately. Um... That is going to be out late 2020, uh, early 2021. Um, Battle of the OVA and Victory will be getting a, a standard def Blu-ray disc release um, with newly restored versions of both of them and the original Pioneer dub. That will come late 2020. I love that dub, so looking forward to that. Um, it will also include the Song Battle Extras, which is cool. Um, the uh, uh, Tokyo Crisis will include the Funimation dub and the ship in 2021. Uh, Fujiko Mine will include the Funimation dub from their original release, um, no release date there. Um, Funimation's license to that expired in August of, of 2018, so Deuce basically just picking that up and moving along with it. Um, Gino Cyber will be a uh, standard disc. Project Eiko will be remastered using a Domesday duplicator to recover video content from the Laserdisc release. Yeah! My, uh, my attention is peaked. No release date on that yet. Uh, Ninja Robot will include the English dub from the aired on Cartoon Network for the first 20 episodes. I'm uh, sorry, the Cartoon Network in India and Asia for the first 20 episodes. Um, Discotech Media says, they are currently seeking assistance in tracking down the rest of the dub. <laughs> so that's a whole story that I would love to learn more about. Um, no release date on that. Um... <laughs> um the Crimson Love Letter Case Closed film is the 21st film in the franchise. It's from 2017. It'll have a new English dub featuring cast from these recent releases. Uh, Submarine Super 99 will be the first English translated release uh, for the anime. It's a, it's a Leisure Matsumoto work. Uh, we'll feature upscale video. Um, and uh, that's the, the, um, the, the notable stuff there. Discotex has already released the first season and the OVA of Konosuba. So this is sort of rounding out their Konosuba. Uh, release. So, yeah, a lot of fun stuff coming from Discotech Media, which is really cool. Um, I'm very curious what Rose of Versailles looks like in HD. But I don't know. I may have lost John and Steve, sadly. Because I see something, uh, I see something weird going on there. Um, so let me just real quick see if I can't do something about that. One moment. Yep. One moment. See if we can't reconnect there, and then we'll continue on with the news. There we go. Hold on. Okay. Hey, welcome back. Okay. Hey, we had a bit of a uh, minor technical issue for some some reason. So it, it, it kind of went out, 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 and I was just like, "Oh, I'm frozen." Yeah, <laughs> in time. So they never make it too far without kind of weird things happening. So there we go. Um, 
<laughs> uh, Rose of Versailles it just happens to look like Utna, or...? Oh, no, no. Utna was very looks, much... Uh, yeah. It just looked like Utna. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, okay. Utna was very consciously a, uh, you know, pulling from Rose of Versailles visually and, yeah. and such, definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No question. <laughs> and then, exactly how are they... Exp- you have the inside knowledge on things like Laserdisc kind of stuff. What are they trying to do? They're trying to grab stuff off of a laser disc. Shouldn't that be like extremely laser disc clear? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, so, should, that should be a really, really nice thing. Um, yeah. Basically, so how are they recovering things? I don't understand that. Well, because the thing is, um, um, the 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 doomsday duplicator, which totally sounds like an anime device. Yeah, uh, world ending. Exactly. Um, uh, basically, it is pulling the the information, the analog information, off of a laser disc, um, and and providing a digital. Okay. It's a, kind of a direct rip off of a laser disc, as opposed to just popping it in and doing a, sort of a, a standard um, uh, transition Pop-in. off of there. Exactly. Um, so just trying to be as close as possible to the original release. Um, if you look up uh, Doomsday. It, it's D O M E as in the original spelling of Doom. Doomsday eighty six dot com is the website for for them, and they 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 show some information here. But comparing comparing, uh, they actually show a uh, frame by frame like a frame example of a standard release and a Doomsday uh, release, and it's notably clearer in the Doomsday okay. release. Um, so they're looking for something like really nice to do this transfer with, which is. <laughs> Lovely and something I honestly thought no one would ever do for Project Echo. <laughs> yeah, like, I adore yeah, that I film. Agree but... on that. <laughs> you know, it's this kind of thing where they start doing like tricky stuff that oh, it might get me to actually upgrade from my VHS copies to, <laughs> to yeah, right actual like decent copies. And, and, and I mean, Project Echo is absolutely like an animated showcase. It is just the, the animation yeah. of that is just stunning. So I can see them saying that that that's worth it. Oh no, the colonel! Oh no, he's coming. Uh, it's a little echo joke, anyway. Yeah, but, um, so yeah, so it, and this is actually kind of interesting because I did not expect. Um, I mean, Discotech's been around for a while. They've been releasing a lot of stuff. They have a, a, a big catalog, but it's yeah. neat seeing them take you know say okay, we're not just like rescuing um, uh, Rose of Versailles. Like we're getting the HD remaster. We're getting these, you know, they're, they're really trying to make sure they they got, like, really nice releases, which is awesome. It makes you wonder where they're getting the money for this. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming all those sales of all those Lupin the Third films. I don't know. Um, mm. uh, I guess that the catalog has kind of built up enough. I was just going to well, say, like, it, when they started talking about the, you know, Lupin stuff that, that they were bringing back, I'm just like, God damn it, where's my wallet? <laughs> you know, I mean... Yeah, that's that is one of my favorite franchises of all time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and if they're and now is the Fujiko uh, Hine is that the the series they did in twenty yes. twelve? Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. that's a very interesting series. It's mm-hmm. it's very it's not for um, fifteen year olds. I'll say that, much. <laughs> but it's it's um, definitely okay. for an adult. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely for an adult audience, but mm-hmm. um, it's it's actually really good good and it puts interestingly goyamon and um why am i blanking on the thing gigan um in a very different interesting dark in one and for one character and light for another character like mm-hmm. goyamon you get a little bit more idea of what he's about actually mm-hmm. like they, he's, he, he stops being one-dimensional mm-hmm. samurai thief and Gigan, you're just look, kind of looking at him. You're just like going, "Okay, he's a lot more cooler, but a lot more darker mm. than we thought." Mm. And so I'm just kind of seeing if. So yeah, I'm interested in that. Uh, it that yeah, take my money. Just mm-hmm. take my money. See, I I have I have no idea, Steve, who those characters are. So when you say Goy, <laughs> Goy, Goya Man, all Goya I can man? think of is is the uh, the uh, Latin American product maker right, Goya. Right. 
It, it's so a all I'm envisioning is like Goya Man, where he's like got a Goya shirt on or something. I'm it's like, a oh, can, okay. it's a, it's tension can of Goya beans with with a sand, or with a with, with a sword. A sword. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Goya Man is is if you look at the characters of Lupin, the third is obviously Lupin. Which is Fujiko right. the only woman of the group? Gigan is the is the guy with the beard and the pipe and the gun, and okay. Goya Man, yeah, and Goya yeah. Man is the the samurai look guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say because that's all I could think of, and I'm like, ah, oh, gracias, y Goya. I just assume he's, he's a Digimon of some kind, you know. A dig- a Digimon. <laughs> Goya Man, Digimon too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Although I'm sure somebody's there's an AMV out there of that somewhere. If the if if Hello Kitty can do Gundam, mm-hmm. then why couldn't uh, Digimon? <laughs> exactly. Lupin. Exactly. Um. So, moving from that classic anime to another classic anime, Crayon Shinchan. Um, the Crayon Shinchan, the movie Crash, Rakuga Kingdom, and Roughly Four Heroes film, um, opened recently at number one in theaters in Japan. Sold 212,000 tickets, earning about $2.47 million in its opening weekend. So, congratulations. This is the 28th Crayon Shinchan movie. Um, opened on September 11th after a de- yeah after a delay from April 24th opening due to COVID-19. Um, there were advanced ticket passes uh, on sale on August 7th. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, the film features a magical crayon, um, which enters on a, on a floating kingdom uh, that has a theme around uh, scribbling, uh, Rakuga, crayon, the whole thing. Um, and there's a whole... Um, uh, uh, there's all sorts of stuff going on in the movie, obviously very colorful. Um, but, you know, Crayon Shinchan is one of those things that I think most otaku over here aren't familiar with. Or, you know, they're, they've heard of it, but it's not a thing. And like, okay, Crayon Shinchan, whatever. Number one film in Japan on its opening weekend, folks. And 28 movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, I if, always... if Shinchan is the Bart Simpson of Japan... The Simpsons only have one film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've been on the air for like 30 years, but they only have one film, not 28 of them. <laughs> and thank you, Toonami, uh, for having Crayon Shinchan on at like 3, 3.30 in the morning. In the morning. En- yeah. Enough to see it and be like, what is going on with that? Mm-hmm. I, have, I have a special place in my heart for Chin Chan. I, I just love that anime. <laughs> to I don't and, and I have no good excuse as to why I do. <laughs> I just do. Mm-hmm. And I think it just boils down to, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but, you know, men have honor in a... Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, fair enough. Uh, uh, wait, 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 Steve, did you like home movies? <laughs> yeah, oh! Yes, love home movies. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that see, there, there you go. go. The Shinshan is right in that demographic. Uh, yeah, okay. To give you yeah, an idea... Okay. Um, the latest Doraemon movie um, dropped to only number three in its sixth weekend, um, uh, earning one million dollars from Friday to Sunday. Um, one million dollars. Uh, having, yes, <laughs> uh, having earned a total of twenty-six point eight one million dollars across its run, um, opened at number one in its first weekend in three hundred seventy-seven theaters. Uh, so yeah. People love their classic, uh, classic anime characters. Robot cats from the future. Hey, <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> and Shinchan, which the animation budget <laughs> budget n- might not be the biggest, but it's certainly <laughs> gross in a lot of cats. Definitely, exactly. <laughs> you know, can't argue with success. Yeah. Uh, boy. Um, moving on to um, also this week. So a new segment this week. I'm just going to run through a few headlines. Um, if anyone wants to mention or talk about them, we, we can, but otherwise we're just going to sort of note a few things this week that are uh, uh, a little uh, more straightforward. Uh, Funimation will be releasing Violet Evergarden on a Blu-ray DVD combo pack uh, in both standard and limited editions later this year. It'll include alternate episodes in both English, uh, dubbed, and sub. Limited edition will include a slipcover box with art from the series, four cover art cards, a 200-page art book, and a sticker sheet. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the, the box does look gorgeous. 
Yeah, yeah, pretty much, probably. Uh, so that is a that is an option. Um, actually, what I might do, I'm going to transition that way so we can do it that one moment. Hold on, everyone. I have an idea. I'm going to try something which might actually work. It's 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 a crazy idea, but it just might work. Um, exactly. Do we push the giant red candy-like button? The history erase button? Not that one. <laughs> Um, nope. there we go. So I pull this down cat. here, and I move this like this. There we go. Ice, ice cream bar my whole <laughs> life. <laughs> also this week, um, this way folks actually hear what you guys are saying. Um, oh. So yes, uh, Funimation. Uh, Funimation um, also announced it will be the exclusive streamer for the regular Magic High School visitor arc which is the second season of Regular Magic High School. Uh, this will be in uh, U.S., Canada, U.K., and Ireland. Uh, it will also be available um, through Anime Lab in Australia and New Zealand. Um, so I enjoyed that series. I want to see the second season of it. Yeah. And thank you, Funimation. Pay up. <laughs> Pay up for that Funimation account. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the director of Banana Fish and Studio Bones have announced that they are going to work on a new original TV anime. Um, that is about everything we know about that. <laughs> Just that they, that's their plan. Um, Ooh, we're they, working. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, they will reveal more September 20th um, on a large public screen in Tokyo. That's what they said. Okay. Um, the, I'm going to expect that's going to be their their premiere trailer bit that's just mm -hmm. going to suddenly the screen will go on. You'll see all the magic and wonder the studio bones and then it'll be like Coming soon. Yeah. And then that'll be it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Go. And they'll get lots of folks out there with their masks on. Um, that's kind of interesting. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the, uh, given, the upcoming Given anime film has sold over 100,000 tickets. This is an upcoming adaptation of a uh, boy's love story. Um, so pre-orders for that have topped 100,000 tickets already. Um, in f uh, And they'll be uh, adding more theaters... Um, probably as a result of that as well. Um, there was a TV anime adaptation of this, and this is the movie version of it. So just worth noting. Uh, it's pretty pretty cool. Uh, the third Girls in Panzer Das Final anime film will be uh, airing next spring. So we have uh, spring 2021 uh, uh, is what we're looking for for that one. Um, and the director... Merch Ahoy! Movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, hey, I like that. Um, mm -hmm. Merch for... Um, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, and he said, production's ongoing. We're, they're in editing already. Um, and they're preparing for dialogue recording to begin. So that is chugging right along, which is cool. Um, update on the live-action Your Name Hollywood adaptation. Yes, that's right. That They're planning on doing that. Um, there's a change. Uh, Lee Isaac Chung is now on tap to direct the Your Name adaptation. Uh, he's going to rewrite the existing script. Um, oh. and so now it's done. <laughs> um, he, uh, he directed his first film back in 2007 with Munyurangabo, which is a drama set in Rwanda uh, in the Kenya Rwanda language. Uh, which was an official selection at Cannes, Toronto, and Berlin. Um, and his most recent film uh, was about living as a Korean-American uh, in uh, a farm in Arkansas, which garnered two awards at Sundance. Um, so definitely an indie darling. Um, originally, Mark Webb of The Amazing Spider-Man and 500 Days of Summer was going to direct. Um, huh. uh, no idea what, what happened there. Um, it looks like they're moving sort of away from a, um, you know big budget director towards a more indie director uh, thing on that. Um, is your name really one that's that's screaming for a live adaptation? It's not hard. You know? I mean, there's some, True. You know, there's some special effects stuff in there, but otherwise it's, you know, um, it's, it's easier than Acura, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just, you know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of one of those things where it's like, ah. Uh, well, it, it anybody all, really want this? Well, I the other thing say, is it's it, it doesn't have any cultural odor, right? Like, it, it's not particularly... I, I, obviously, the, so 
people are going to yell at me for that. Um, it is a film that you could easily translate to other countries and, you know, remove the Japanese elements of it and it would still work. So I think that makes yeah, it easier. You yeah, could, you could have somebody living next to the Behringer Crater mm -hmm. in Arizona yep. and be like, how did the crater get there? Oh, it's, you know, an asteroid mm -hmm. crashed. Yep. There we go. Yep. Um, yeah, but it just it, the subject matter, the, the actual, you know, franchise of, of that – doesn't exactly jump at me as like the first thing I would want to adapt into a live action film mm. yeah. would be that. Yeah. Be like, mm. It also made like a billion dollars. So. <laughs> as, an, as an anime. Well, you know what I mean, it's like. Doesn't matter, th right? Like, this I, is I the flogging, those... flogging the dead horse again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where yeah. it's like, you've made your money out of it as an anime, and now you're going to try this, you're going to spend money, and it's totally well, but not going to go the same places that the anime did. Different people, different people, right? Like, the anime yeah. folks made their money off of it. The Hollywood folks want a piece of that now. Uh, um, and they can tie in. They can say, you know, you heard of this Your Name thing, but you don't like cartoons, so come see our live-action version. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. Um, <laughs> uh, and finally... Um, Kyoto Animation has absorbed another company. Um, uh, animation Dio or Animation Do uh, was sort of a, a, um, uh, a spinoff. It was originally Kyoto Animation Osaka Studio, uh, established in two th the year 2000, became its own corporation um, under the name of Animation Do in December 2010. Uh, they worked on Free Yotomi Swim Club. That was sort of their one of their big things. But they've worked with Kyoto Animation pretty much everything since they started. Um, what's also notable is that uh, this report tells us Kyoto Animation has lost about two hundred two thousand dollars in the fiscal year ending March thirty first, while Animation Do uh, lost about sixty two thousand dollars U S. in that same year. Uh, so Kyoto Animation is uh, not making a lot of money recently, quite understandably, given their, their mm -hmm. situation. Uh, but that is just more info, more, more, uh, just worth noting that there's some shifting around in the anime studio world, and that just kind of made sense. Um, so yeah, that's the news for the week. When I saw that little bit about the acquisition, I didn't realize that it was a former portion of them yeah so i kind of was like huh what how why are you going and buying something right now mm -hmm. so i, I get to make yeah. part of yeah yeah. 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 yeah yeah probably one of those things where they they well obviously they're both losing money but it's kind of like you know why have problems separately let's just have them all together you know what's interesting is is you know hearing the loss on that you know sixty two thousand yeah. on one hand and two hundred twenty five thousand on the other and you have to kind of wonder you know you compare and you're so used to hearing losses of millions of dollars yeah. and millions of dollars in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. here you got these two animation studios granted it's a kind of a different animal but you know when they said wow we have sixty two thousand whole to me I'm just like one okay. Um, Okay, you'll get that back, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, sixty-two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But you know, that so somebody the, either bought a really nice car, or they, <laughs> or they have one right. one third of a house. Okay, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you know, it's kind of like, it, you know, I hear that, and I'm just kind of like, one. Okay, it, you know, clearly they think they're in dire straits. I don't consider that in dire straits. Oh, so I yeah. think it's interesting how the yeah. reaction how the reaction to that is. Well, let's just knock this out at, yeah. the, at, the, at the at the start of this and not let it get worse. I guess. Yeah, and I don't think well, it's I, also interesting yeah. that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, just, I don't think they're in dire straits. Um, I think they're yeah. just you know they, they're in a bad year because they just you know right. uh, productivity is down, um, and so um, they, and they were probably you know it's one of those things where, as you grow, um, you look to expand. You have this group in Osaka doing their thing, and they're like, well. Do we really need to be one company? Let's sort of split up so we can sort of organize. And then things change. And you're like, well, it's not really helpful for us to be two things uh, because we're basically still working together on everything. So let's just, you know, merge back together. Right. So. And, and not to bring up the obviously sad mm -hmm. circumstances of things, but you have people in Osaka 
and you probably have people that you need that are seasoned that know what they're doing that you can yeah, re right. reintegrate right. into right. your operation to keep things running yep. until you know, the appropriate uh, manpower can be put in place that's a great point so yeah yeah, yeah that's helpful mm -hmm. in that respect yeah absolutely wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice if all businesses kind of had that acumen of 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 realizing things and just maybe going you know let's come up with a better solution as opposed to a billion in the hole what are we going to do we're going to spend six billion take a loss of four billion <laughs> to try to oh god we it up. Yeah. it's just refreshing to see that kind of just like that exactly. fourth thought and thinking and, and you, know, mm -hmm. you know say hey Let's, let's let's not borrow more trouble. Let's just let's totally. Totally agreed. 